It is a blessing of another brand new day to you of yours out there. Welcome to your favorite program in this presence, a program that talks about the Word of God and how we can apply the Word of God into our life so we can become a transformed, changed person from the old ways of life into the newness of life in Christ Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall all rejoice and be glad in it. And it's of the mercies of the Lord that the Lord has kept you and myself to witness another brand new day. We need to give all the praises, all the honor, all the adoration back unto Him because He deserves our praise. The Bible, according to Psalm 16, verse 11, says, Thou will show me the part of life in thy presence is fullness of joy and at his right and their pleasures forevermore i'm your host for today i'm akikunle akela and the topic i have before you on this glorious day is a spiritual armor spiritual armor looking at what we're going to discuss on today's topic is the aspect of an armor what is an armor now talking about spiritual armor joining us to discuss on our topic on this is pastor oyeka chuku chuku emeka of and lift this global ministries in johannesburg south africa is here to discuss with us on this day it is another great privilege here for us to have you to come and discuss with us on this day thank you so much my brother the pleasure is mine mm, amen and the last time we had you in the studio it was a wonderful time in god's presence and i know of a truth that the lord will also use it to speak his mind to his own people on this day amen. looking at our topic today amen. spiritual armor amen. before we talk about spiritual armor let's lay a foundation what is an armor okay yeah, the topic is spiritual armor. By armor, we are talking about, you know, um, a protective covering that is worn maybe in a battle in order to protect our body. Just like um, you, from the world of the military, when you look at a soldier dress, uh, dressing, you will discover that they, 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 they wear a lot of things on their body that will protect them from the enemy's attack, from the weapons of the enemy. That is exactly what an armor is like. It's just to cover us, to protect us from the attack of the enemy. Mm. Now, I've been laid the foundation that an armor is a protective device. Now, looking at spiritual armor. Mm. Yeah, looking at spiritual armor, we are looking at it in, in a way that um, just the same thing because whatever you see physically has a spiritual undertone. So in other words, what, what we are seeing now in, uh, as a physical thing, as a dress code of a, of a military man, is exactly how it is in the realm of the spirit. Now, writing this, we talk about spiritual armor. Paul was a man that wrote mainly about this armor. And uh, Paul wrote this book, like the book of Ephesians, where we are looking at, at this morning, at this moment. Paul looked at it from the perspective that by the time Paul was writing that epistle, he wrote it while in prison, while in prison by Nero. And Paul was writing it in prison. And that, that goes to say that he must have examined the soldier that was there, the, the, his captors, and then be able to look at them and from there, God gave him the inspiration to be able to use the description of the, of, of, of the soldier's dress code to be able to give us some insight on what it takes for us to be able to get divine help that we need to shield us from this world. Because we are fighting not only the devil, we are fighting our weaknesses, we are fighting our, uh, our, uh, you know, our, our weaknesses who, uh, you know, and the people around us. There's a lot of things that we fight, invisible battle, things we don't know. But there are these weapons that we can also equip ourselves with, which the Lord has made visible for us, made uh, possible for us and available for us so that we can put them on and be able to wage war against the onslaughts of the enemy. Amen. That's so powerful and so profound. Thank you very much. And to our viewers, Father, let's go into our first music video. We'll be right back with more for you. On our topic today, spiritual armor. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. In your presence, that's where I belong. In your We are not called to raise money, but to raise men. When you raise men, men will raise money.
Welcome back from that force music video and if you just joining us, you're tuning into his presence on our topic today, spiritual armor. And with us on this day is Pastor Oyega Chuku, Chuku a maker of Unlifters Global Ministries in Johannesburg, South Africa. So before we went on the previous break, you actually laid a foundation as to what a hammer is. Mm -hmm. And you said it is a, a protective device, device. that a, a soldier actually puts yes. on to actually protect him from the attacks of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And you said the same thing also applies in the spiritual yes. aspect of it. Yes. Now let's go to our Bible reading, which is taken from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18, that now lists the spiritual armors okay. of a Christian. Going to Ephesians chapter 6, we want to take it from verse 10 to 18. The Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shoot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, thinking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all fiery deaths of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Mm. The list of the armor. <laughs> now, looking at it here, Paul is simply making us to realize that in this world we are in, the moment a man enlists himself with the Lord, mm. the moment, uh, you know, let me take, you, let talk, take us uh, back a bit. God created man to be with him. But man, out of disobedience, mm. you know, lost that privilege. Mm. And then God came back to restore man back to himself. And now the rule now is that for you now to be back with God, you know, perfectly, you need to do what? To accept the finished work of Calvary. You need to believe in Jesus Christ, the one that came to die for man and then to, 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 to redeem man back to God. The word redemption means to buy back. He came to buy back man to God. By, his, by the shedding of his own blood. Now, and when you do so, that's why Bible says, as men that receive today, he gave power to become the, the sons of God. Now, having done so, you are now with him. Now, once that is done, what happens is that you, are, you have decamped from the camp of the devil, mm -hmm. and you are now in the camp of God. Mm -hmm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now that you are in the camp of God, you have automatically made yourself an enemy of Satan. Because he was your boss, you left him, and you are now in the camp of his enemy. Now, and that tells you that there is battle. Because the devil himself is bent on destroying anything that has to do with God. So he is bent on soiling whatever God has done. So he can't stop it. That is his duty. So once you are with God, then you will be ready for challenges. You'll be ready for obstacles. Sometimes we preach that, uh, you know, you see, you see people uh, taking a wrong notion of the gospel. That the moment you become a child of God, all your problem is gone. Mm -hmm. There is no way problem will go finish in this life. Life is designed that you live this life with problems. Because it is that problem that makes you to look up to God. It is that problem that makes you to, be, to, to, you know, to connect to men. Because even when God will have to do something for you, he will do it through men. So the problem will be there. Now, but what we're saying is that the attacks that the enemy is bringing, the frustration the enemy is bringing, or whatever, Paul wrote, he said to us, we are not ignorant of the devil devices. So he will do those things in order to discourage you, to, for you to be able to decamp from the camp of God and return back to his camp. He is also winning souls. So based on that, 
then we, Paul is writing here that we need to equip ourselves with divine help. I am, and I am using another term for these weapons. It's divine help. So we need these divine helps. We need these weapons to be able to help ourselves, this armor, to help ourselves, to shield ourselves from the attacks of the enemy. He started by telling us, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power thereof. Now, for you to be strong in the Lord, he's, he's calling our consciousness to the fact that our strength comes from God. And the, the moment we stay with God, we will, we, will be, we will be strong enough to wage war against the onslaughts of the enemy. Then he went further to say to us, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now look at those things. Who are they? Spiritual wickedness. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Demonic generals that is, that is working against the state of the nations. That is working in the parliament, working in the, in the, in the leadership of, 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 the, of, of any organization, any country. These are the generals, principalities, and powers, demonic forces that possesses people, messes the life of people. Eh? Spiritual wickedness, the, the, the demonic general that are in charge of religion, religious spirit is one of the deadliest spirits. Those are the spirits we are talking about. That is why you see a lot of religion in this world today. A lot of them are just deceiving people because their leaders are already possessed by these this wicked spirits. So people are being led astray, made to know that there is another way to reach God apart from Jesus Christ, who automat authoritatively said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes back through, uh, 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 gets to God except through me. Other, other, other religious leaders, so we, uh, they don't know where they are going. Some of them, are, most of them that died already, they are still in the grave. So I don't know. Now, these are the forces we are fighting. And he, he said the last one was rulers of the darkness of this world. Those are the spirit, the, the demonic forces that are in, in charge of business. In the business world, people want to make money by all means. They don't care what they do. I guess what I'm saying, Jesus, the, Paul said, we need to guard ourselves against this thing. And what are the weapons? The belt, the belt of truth. In anything we are going to do with God, if we are going to stand and win this battle, we need to arm ourselves with the belt of truth. Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth you know, will make you free. So we need to arm ourselves with the truth because it is the truth. God is true. His word is true. Everything about him is true. When you are standing on the truth, you are standing with God. So we need to shield ourselves with the belt of truth. Truth, the belt is one of the first uh, you know, weapon that a, a soldier puts on. He put on his belt. There he puts his sword and everything. He holds every other thing. Once you hold your breath, he said the breastplate of righteousness. We must be in right standing with God. Be in right standing with God. Walk with him. Work with him. Work with him. Do things the right way. Breastplate of righteousness. A priest puts it on his chest. A, 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 you know, a, a soldier puts it on his chest. Breastplate. It protects your heart from the, 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 the spells of the enemy. Then he said again, we should put on the shoe, you know, the, of the gospel of peace. We should declare this word, be always ready to declare the word of God, give out the counsel of God, the good news of the gospel at any slightest uh, chance we have. Sir, if we take heed to this, today's criminals would have become missionaries. Mm. Are you going to say, today there are a lot of Judas everywhere who would have become Jesus but because we are not preaching the gospel. Today we preach the gospel of money. Everywhere is money, everywhere is anything. When a pastor cough, <coughs> he says, so seed. Yeah. When they do anything, so seed. Is that what we are called? We are not called to raise money, but to raise men. When you raise men, men will raise money. So these are the things we need to, people should know the truth, people should hear the gospel the right way. 
and then God will be glorified. That is what we need. He said, when we do that, then he said, then we should put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the helmet of salvation, which is also make us understand that it is whatever we are doing here is to save souls. Salvation of our soul is very much important to God than anything else we do on this earth. So we should take heed to these things. And when we are doing these things, we are in the right stand with God. He said, taking up the shield of faith. Faith, without it, you cannot please God. It's a shield that covers you. It's a shield that protects you. A soldier will hold his shield. No matter the arrow you are throwing, he will be using the shield to shield himself. He protects you. He covers you so that the enemy's weapon will not get to you. The same way with faith. With faith. The way the, the, the shield protects the soldier is the way faith protects us. Because it is with your faith. Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If it was not their faith in God, the fire, they would have roasted in the fire. If it was not the faith of Daniel, the lion would have made feast of him. It was their faith that stood them. The woman of Israel blood for a good 12 years, it was her faith that put an end to that plague. So faith is a shield that can connect us to God and ward off all the satanic attack that comes our way. If it is not our faith, they, uh, Daniel and the three Hebrews, they would have eaten the, the, the king's meat. But faith, okay, the faith will help you to realize that you are God. Faith is all about looking up to God, be, uh, you know, depending on God and doing what God says you should do. Mm -hmm. Then not only that, he said we should take up the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit is the word of God. Mm -hmm. If we don't know the word, what are we going to do? The word of God is the constitution of heaven. So we need to, you know, ward ourselves up with the word. It is, you know... Uh, uh, Hebrew tells us in chapter 4 verse 12 the word of God is quick and power, sharper than into it, so piercing to the abandon and asunder of souls and spirits and of the joint of the marrow and is a designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart there is nothing the word cannot do when we hold on to the word of God not to talk the least he said I'm praying always when you connect the word with prayer your faith and every other weapon will be in, in, in position and the moment that is done you are properly protected. The enemy will attack, but they will not get through to you. Mm. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you very much, sir, for actually explaining what Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 18 actually means. We celebrate God in your life and so of yours. Right, let's go on to our next book, which will be used for our Bible reading. And when I will be right back with more for you. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. In your presence, that's where I belong. In your we use that those armors to be able to attack the enemy back, just like Jesus did. Welcome back from that Bible reading. One and if you're just joining us, you're tuning into His presence on our topic today, spiritual armor. And with us on this is Pastor Oyeka Chuku Chukwemeka. To go into the hope and heaven written by our Father in the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboye. He wrote, Weapons of war usually fall under two major categories, offensive and defensive. Body armor can be classified as defensive weapons of war against missiles, projectiles, and handled combat weapons. They work as protective covering designed to safeguard vital parts of the body. Today's Bible reading talks about spiritual warfare, revealing how the different parts of the physical body armor mirror the spiritual armor available to us as believers in Christ. We have at our disposal invisible weapons of spiritual warfare that are potent against the wicked assaults of the enemy. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11, our spiritual armor is referred to as armor of God, which implies that it possesses divine attributes, making it indestructible by the power of the devil. We are invited to put on the whole armor of God. However, this armor is inaccessible to those who have not accepted the Lordship of Jesus Christ over their lives. Putting on the armor of God is equivalent to putting on Jesus. He is more than enough to protect us against 
all evil and temptations we may encounter. In Romans chapter 13, verse 14, the Bible says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Putting on Jesus involves accepting him as a Lord and Savior, meditating on his word day and night, living a life of holiness, and spreading his gospel. I pray that in the heat of the battles of life, the armor of God will be your strong defense in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, the weapons of war. That we, like he said here, that, you know, cate uh, categorize into two, offensive and defensive. And both of them are very, very powerful and very, very important because um, uh, you must defend yourself and at the, at the same time, you must attack, you know. So uh, when we look at the weapons as we as enlisted, as we have already narrated, we discover that out of all those weapons, the word of God is our offensive weapon. You know, it's offensive, coupled with prayer. It is what? Offensive. We use that, those armors to be able to attack the enemy back, just like Jesus did at the wilderness. The Bible said that the enemy came in Matthew chapter 4, from verse 1 to 10. The enemy came to attack him. And what did he do? He dished out the word of God. He was able to, you know, uh, slay the enemy because, because of the what? The knowledge of the word. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joint and of the marrow, and is a designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. So we need this word to be able to be able to, you know, launch such attack. And then go, go, going ahead, you discover that the attack is, the enemy is there. At times, we, it looks as if this man is not there because we don't see. He's, he's a spirit. And they are always at work at all times. Night, day, night, day. Two, four, seven. They are always, uh, uh, you know, uh, on attack. All we need to do is to guard ourselves. I, I, I read a story of a young man that was in a plane going somewhere. And the air hostess came and gave him hot, uh, hot drink, you know, uh, you know, an alcoholic drink to, to take. The man said no. Secondly, the, the, the lady went and, you know, and repackaged the thing. You know, maybe it was the way she presented it. She now did it, you know, in a more, you know, respectable way and brought it back to the young man. The man said, said no, he doesn't want. He was busy reading a book. And then all of a sudden, the lady went and reported to, the, to her superior. And the superior came back to the man and said, Sir, you need to take this because of the altitude we are in and whatever, whatever, you know, explain to the man. They told the man that they are, they are on duty, so they are doing their duty. The man himself said that he's on duty. You understand? He said he told, he told them that he's a Christian. And as a Christian, he's on duty at all times. You understand? So, because they are on duty, they want to make sure that everybody in the plane takes what they offer so that they will be all protected. The man said he himself is on duty, and that's why he will not take alcohol so that he will not also <laughs> destroy his own, you know, work that he is also doing. So, uh, at all times, we should always be prepared because the enemy can attack at any time. Mm. That's why Peter said, he said, be vigilant, be sober, for your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a royal noise, seeking who he may devour. Mm. So at all times, we must be at our lot. He can attack at any time. Mm, that's so powerful, sir. In the latter part, our father in the Lord, Pastor E. Adebe wrote, the Bible used the imagery of physical warfare to communicate a powerful spiritual message to us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. Firstly, we were asked to guide our waist with the studded belt of truth. It is with this same belt that our sword is fastened to our body. In the days of old, a soldier guided in this manner was recognized as being on active duty. We are expected to guide ourselves with the truth as the foundation of all our spiritual activities. Next, we are to find our protection in righteousness by putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Also, our feet should be ever ready to move with the gospel of peace. We should then harm ourselves with the shield of faith to quench all the fairy arrows of the enemy. To protect our head, the most important part of our body, we must put on the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation is required to protect our spiritual destiny. Finally, as soldiers of Christ, we are to wield the sword of the spirit, which is the spoken word of God. 
as the only offensive weapon mentioned, this is the soldier's most important weapon and it is supplied by the Holy Spirit. I decree that God will fortify you and make you untouchable to the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm. Yeah, it is self-explanatory. Once we are able to put on the whole armor, then we are protected. The Lord is able to keep his own. And the Bible tells us the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is saved. So, and the, one thing I want to point out here is that is this, that all these weapons, we are not to look up to God to clothe us with these weapons. That's one very important for us to note. The Bible says, put on. Mm. So in other words, it is I and you, we, that need to do what? Put it on. So in other words, it is our responsibility to take up this weapon and put on. The belt of truth. If you don't study the word, which is the truth, you won't be made free. So you need to take up that responsibility of do what? Taking heed to the word of God. The shield of faith. Every one of them, all these weapons, it is our responsibility to put it on. And once you put them on, the Lord is there to shield you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you very much, sir. And so, of your side, let's continue to our next break, which will be so our hymn. We'll be singing in 18. We say he's onward, Christian soldier. As soon as we come back, we'll come back with the memory verse for you. Still on our topic today, spiritual armor. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. In your presence, that's where I belong. In your fighting from victory. We are already victorious. Jesus has already defeated Satan, dealt with sin. Welcome back from that human if just joining us, you're tuning into his presence on our topic today, spiritual armor. And this is the time of the program where we discuss our memory verse. Our memory verse is taken from Romans chapter 8 and verse 37. Romans 8, 37. The Bible says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hmm. Making us to understand that, yes, we are to put on the spiritual armor. These weapons are very, very important. But we should also know that we are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from victory. We are already victorious. Jesus has already defeated Satan, dealt with sin, and then our weaknesses are done for. He has done everything that needs to be done, but it is our responsibility to stand in in that victory which he has given to us and take heed to his word and do that which is necessary as he has instructed us. By so doing, we'll be able to continue to walk in that victory. And if we do so, then he said to us, nay, in all this, no matter what the enemy brings along us, we are more than conqueror. We have conquered, the enemy is a conqueror. He has conquered great people, great men and great women. But if we remain in the Lord, we are more than him. So there's nothing he will do that he will get at us. He will try but he will definitely fail because at the end of the day, Paul said, having done all, stand. In other words, having done all, don't give up. No matter the challenge, don't give up. You may be tossed through and flow, don't give up. The every way they, it will look as if heaven is, is collapsing, don't give up. Have you lost your loved one? Don't give up. Are, you, are your friends threatening you, telling you that it is time, that this and that, they are trying to lure you out of, the, uh, out of the race? Don't give up. No matter what, even if there is no money in your pocket, London has sent you out, school fees you have not paid, don't give up. If you don't give up, definitely you will go up. Amen. In Jesus' name. So there's a prayer point that I pray for our viewers. Our Father in the Lord, Pastor E.E. E. Adebo said we should pray. Father, please prepare and equip me for the battle as a good soldier of Christ in Jesus' name. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Precious Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory and praise because you are awesome. Daddy, it is our prayer this moment that, Lord, you will prepare us and equip us, O oh God, in this battle, Lord, as your good soldier, give us the strength, the courage, the boldness. Give us, O oh God, all it takes to be able to, Lord, dislodge the onslaught of the enemy and bring glory to your name. 
Thank you, Abba Father, for what I believe it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you very much. And to all of you also, let's continue on to our prophecy declaration with our Father in the Lord, Pastor E. E. Adeboe. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. This will be your month of breakthrough. Amen. It will put an end to barrenness in your life. Yeah. Every form of fruitless efforts will end tonight in your life. It will turn you to a wonder to the world. Yes. It will silence your mockers permanently. Yes. It will command success into your life. Yes. You shall be fruitful. Yes. Physically, you shall be fruitful. Yes. Materially, you shall be fruitful. Yes. Spiritually, you shall be fruitful. Yes. In all areas of your life, you shall be yes. fruitful. Yes. You will never fail again. It will wipe away tears from your eyes. Tonight will mark the beginning of your season of joy. It shall be well with you. Your joy will never end. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Welcome back from that prophecy declaration. I believe you've claimed every prophecy that has gone forth onto you. So before we let you go finally this episode, what will be your final thoughts to our viewers on this topic, spiritual armor? Hmm. On the final note, I want to say, Paul says something. He says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. I want to stand on that word to say to us that what we need is to do what? Give ourselves give heed to the word of God. Once we are able to assess the word and assess the truth of the word and stand by that truth, every other weapon will find its place. And once they find their place in our lives, no matter what the enemy will throw at us, we'll be able to wage it because our faith will be so strong and so high in order to combat all the onslaughts of the enemy. Amen in Jesus mighty name. Thank you very much. I was at a break. God in your life and is our prayers that God will continue to increase on in our sides in Jesus' name. Amen. And above all, thank you for making time to be with us so on much. this day. Amen. Amen. And so if you also are there, I believe we've learned so many things on our topic today, spiritual armor. Perhaps you have any comments on the leave us, you can do that on our Facebook page. That's in his presence, bracket arts and bracket. You have to know you on the leave us, you can do that on in his presence at Redemption TM TV. I use this time out to say very big thank you to our sponsors out there. That's McLeod G Farms, one John Five. House on the Rock in Johannesburg, South Africa. And of course, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Master's Lays. I leave with our last music video as you always stay in God's presence. God bless you.